Oof. <laughs> Helmet. Hello, welcome back to more coverage from Eurobike 2021 here at Cycling Tips. Now, normally this show is crammed full with traditional bikes, your road bikes, your mountain bikes, your gravel bikes. But this year, after a year's hiatus, there definitely seems to be a bit of a change going on because it's more of an e-motion show with uh, e-bikes, cargo bikes taking prime place in the show halls. So we thought we'd take a look at, well, what's on offer, how these things should change our lives for the better. Hopefully we're going to drop the cars, the vans and get out on these things. So let's delve into one of these many halls, in fact plenty of the many halls, and check out what's on offer and what we can expect over the next couple of years from the e-motion revolution. <laughs> interesting to know is walking the halls that there's not many big brands here traditional big brands that you think of when you're talking about bikes in fact a lot of the brands come from the automotive the aerospace the carbon composite industry there's also brands like bros who you might not have heard of but if you take your car apart we'll see plenty of motors from the windscreen wipers to your electric windows that are all branded up with that now if you take your specialised motor apart you might also see this name there as well. The big question is are your traditional bike brands going to miss out on the opportunity of being part of this revolution? Just for instance we're here at Urban Hour which is possibly the biggest maybe the coolest cargo bike brand out there and well there's very little Shimano in fact this brake here is the only thing we can find it's all Tektro, Bosch and Magura on all the bikes. So is the biggest drivetrain manufacturer in the world even missing out on this revolution? Obviously with cargo bikes, town bikes, not falling under the UCI remit, you can go as uh, crazy, wild and wacky with the designs as you like. So let's check some of them out. This is the Black Iron Horse brand uh, and i got to say, bit of a blast to ride, never rode anything with rear wheel steer before, takes a couple of minutes to get used to, but it's nice and compact, nippy through a city centre I'm sure, put your kids in there, your Great Dane and pop down the local uh, bike shop to pick up your old bike. Coming at you Phil. <laughs> okay, we're here with Henning of Urban Arrow now. The big question is, why this explosion of urban cargo bikes now? Has the pandemic brought it on or is it something else or a few factors? Yeah. Uh, hey guys, with the pandemic has shown that the cargo bike is not a fling, the cargo bike is here to stay. It proved that you can, um, in, a, in a different world, things still can move and to move around to get uh, parcels at home that you order online sitting at home and you want to go out with the kids and uh, have some fun well the cargo bike is a perfect solution so I would say uh, an explosion of cargo bikes is something for us not unexpected because we've been working in this for 10 years and now with the pandemic a lot of people made different choices now Henning what sort of trends can you foresee in the cargo world? A trend in the cargo bike industry is that, that there will be more cargo bikes in general. So it's probably the same as 10 years ago with the e-bike industry that uh, in the beginning you only saw uh, e-bikes for city e-bikes. Now we have 
uh, road bikes with electric assist. We have mountain bikes. We have a full industry of e-bikes. We see the same thing happening in the cargo bike industry. That uh, it started with a model to transport your kids in there, like 25 years ago uh, in Christiania. Um, and now we have a full cargo bike industry. And we'll see two-wheelers, three-wheelers, four-wheelers, uh, suspension, uh, rain covers, full range of accessories. Yeah, to, to get more people, make it more attractive to a bigger crowd um, to hop on a cargo bike. Yeah, And we're... hopefully that will change the infrastructure of cities in the future. Yeah, and, and I think a good example is Munich in Germany. Um, our first dealer started seven years ago and there was no cargo bike industry. You didn't see any cargo bikes in the streets. Um, uh, four years later, the city of Munich uh, subsidized the buying of a cargo bike by 25% of the buying price. At that time, it was a thousand euro subsidy on one of our bikes. Now, another three years later, you see the city of Munich is, is full with cargo bikes. You see them everywhere. And not only Erm Eros, we have in total, I think, 10 cargo bike dealers in Munich alone who sell different types and, and brands of cargo bikes. And now you see the, the infrastructure changing. And sometimes a city needs that to, to take the first step, subsidize, believe in, okay, a cargo bike is a good solution to, to change our way we transport stuff. Start subsidizing this to make it attractive to a bigger crowd. Then you see, okay, there's more people cycling and then realize, okay, now we have to protect them and give them more space in the city. And you see in Munich more cycle lanes and um, that the car gets, uh, it used to be like a two lane car traffic. Now it's one lane car traffic and the other lane is for, um, for cyclists. Now we've just been talking off camera and he's told me about another side effect that, well, I didn't think about when... Uh talking about front loader bikes yeah uh, interesting thing about a front loading family transporter cargo bike the, where the kids sit in the front they see the traffic coming uh, from young age on they get used to the idea that you ride in a cargo bike or on a bicycle later and they see the traffic coming along and if you um, tell them okay I just uh, give signal and I turn right and they have the right of way young kids uh, they already notice how to behave in traffic and later when they ride themselves on a bicycle they already know how to react um, and interact with traffic. They just have to learn to ride the bike. And that's just a simple fact. They will be more comfortable and safe cyclists later on. I know this isn't the normal thing that we usually cover here at Cycling Tips. We've dabbled in it before, but it's hard to ignore. Well, what could possibly be a pivotal moment in urban transport? The thing is, are you going to be part of it? Is it something that excites you? I know I could be uh, splashing the cash on what is, well, the ideal vehicle for an N plus one. And hey, there's not many bikes that you can fit this many chocolate bars in, is there? Okay, let us know what you think in the comments. Are you gonna be part of it? Is it something that excites you? Join the conversation below. Give us a subscribe, give us a like, and uh, 